Hi, my name is Alexa MacArthur and I'm a Senior Research Fellow at JBI. And with me today I have Associate Professor Zachary Munn. So hi Zach, welcome. Hello. Um, today we're going to have a talk about different types of systematic reviews and, um, and systematic reviews aren't just systematic reviews obviously of effectiveness and so um, yeah, I just sometimes people and health professionals might ask me, they might say, well you can't do a systematic review in my field because there aren't actual RCTs. So um, does this preclude you from doing a systematic review, Zach? Well, that's a really good question and it's, 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 a, it's a very common question, isn't it? I'm sure you've seen from your years of teaching that a lot of people seem to think if there's no randomised controlled trials, it means there's even no evidence to support uh, decision making or that it means that you can't do a systematic review. And I think this comes back from the history of systematic reviews um, in healthcare and medicine particularly where originally they really did focus on just looking at randomised controlled trials and then summarising these randomised controlled trials, normally using a meta-analysis um, um, to answer a question about an intervention or a therapy or a question relating to effectiveness. And uh, because this is sort of where a lot of the methods for systematic reviews came, uh, came about and a lot of the understandings about systematic reviews, sometimes people don't realise that actually um, you can do different types of systematic reviews. There's a lot of different types of systematic reviews. Um, and you can also do systematic reviews of other types of evidence as well. So you might be asking a question of effectiveness, but you may be in a field where there aren't a lot of randomised controlled trials for, for whatever reason, funding reasons um, or, or, or discipline specific reasons, whatever it may be. But at least at JBI, we've always said, well, we need to rely on the best available evidence. Mm -hmm. So even if there are no randomised controlled trials, we should still be trying to search for all of the evidence relating to our particular question and then summarising it uh, to inform our practice as much as we can. Mm -hmm. so, so, so just because there's no RCTs, it doesn't mean you can't do a systematic review relating to effectiveness or interventions or therapy. Um, but the other aspect of your question is really interesting as well. So um, sometimes the questions that arise in clinical practice aren't about whether or not a treatment is effective. They might be different. They might be about how useful is a diagnostic test or, or what are the risk factors for developing a particular condition or how do people with, with a particular condition experience their day-to-day -day lives. And that's why we have a lot of different types of systematic review approaches now. We have systematic reviews that look at diagnostic test accuracy. Uh, we have systematic reviews that look at um, prognosis and prognostic factors and prognostic models. We have systematic reviews that look at qualitative research um, relating to um, uh, meaningfulness and experiences of living with, with, with conditions. So there are now actually a lot of different types of systematic reviews and, and evidence synthesis. I, I know you're in uh, have a lot of interest and expertise in systematic reviews of policy and text and narrative as well. So there are a lot of different types of systematic reviews. So just because there's no RCTs or just because your question isn't related to effectiveness, um, it doesn't mean you can't do a systematic review. And I think that will be really a good thing for a lot of health professionals to hear um, if they're working in that particular area. Um, so, so also, you know, if I have a question that isn't related to whether a treatment works or not, um, are systematic reviews what you're saying? They are still appropriate. They can. Then? They definitely. They definitely can. Yeah. And and I know um, your own experience with some of the reviews you've done. Um, you can answer a lot of different questions using this structured research process that is a systematic review, the formal way to assess and look at all of the evidence relating to a particular question, whatever that question may be, trying to synthesise it into a result or finding that can inform um, policy or practice. So, mm -hmm. so definitely, definitely. And, and, and um, I know at, at JBI we have methods now for over 10 types mm -hmm. of evidence synthesis, 10 types of, of, of review questions. Um, don't think that not having a question relating to effectiveness precludes you from doing a systematic review. All right. Well, thanks, Zach. That's um, been really in interesting and, and I'm sure it'll be interesting to our, our viewers as well. So if you are interested in undertaking um, some different types of systematic reviews, please um, come online and, and find out more about JBI. Thanks very much, Zach. Thanks, Alexa.